in this video we will train a deep learning model but without writing any single line of code and for that purpose we will be using ludwig which is an open source project from uber ludwig is built on top of tensorflow and what ludwig is asking user to provide only three different set of informations and ludwig will take those informations and will do all the necessary activities required for your training activities for evaluation and for testing activities ludwig will do all the things in in the background so from user perspective you need to provide the input file which will contain your data the second user needs to provide all the all the columns which will be used as an input and also you need to provide the data type for all your input features right the third information Ludwig is asking user to provide the output columns and user needs to provide the data type for the output features or columns okay so take an example here i am providing the input features and i am giving the column name as text and the type for that would be text right and similarly for output we are providing the name of the output column which is class and the type of that class is category right so here my input is input column is text type is text which covers my second activity the third information about the output feature the column name is class and the type of that class is category right so this covers point number 2 and point number 3 and user need to provide the input file when while training deep learning model with the help of ludwig we'll see in the below section how we can provide that input data at the time of model training ludwig design philosophy is unique for deep learning model design and it use data type approach for model design which makes this tool usable across different type of problem statements so if we look these examples where we have taken different type of data as input and different type of data as an output and once you'll combine this input and output data in a unique way it will solve different type of problem statement so here in the first line i am combining text as an input and category as an output so which means it's a text classifier problem so in the second statement if we'll take image as an input and category and as an output it will solve image classifier problem right in the third example once you will take image as, as an input and text as an output it will solve image captioning problem right so in this way you can take different type of Im, uh, input and different type of output and once you'll combine those input and output data in a unique way it will solve different type of problem statements so you can see that we have audio input and binary output which which will solve the speaker verification or speaker classification type of problem statement and similarly once you'll take text as an input and sequence as an output it will solve named entity recognition or summarization problem statement and as an user you only need to provide what input data you are expecting and what output you are trying to predict that's it and ludwig will do all the necessary activities required for building the deep learning model and how it will verify the model output everything would be done in the background by ludwig okay and if you also look what sort of model architecture ludwig will provide it will have different type of model architecture depending upon what type of data your provide data you are providing as an input so you can see that for text audio speech time series and sequence type of input data you can use any of these type of model architecture right so stacked cnn you can use rnn or a combination of cnn rnn or you can also use transformer or bird right so if you look the configuration which we have given here i am simply giving encoder as parallel cnn right 
so my text input data will go through text cnn this parallel cnn model architecture and it will produce the class category right so that's what this type of model architecture will do and similarly for image input you can use cnn or resnet right so these are the pre configured encoder architecture within the ludwig but ludwig is also provide you features or functionality to write your own deep learning code which you can very very easily integrate it with ludwig pipeline now we have understood at high level what ludwig is expecting from users so we have seen ludwig is expecting user to provide list of columns along with their data types the list of columns for output along with their data type and we have also seen what type of model architecture we can specify depending upon your use case right but now the question comes where you will store all those parameters or configurations so within ludwig framework we have one configuration file where you need to provide all those values so it's not only limited to these input output and the model architecture but it's it will contain lots of different type of values like what hyper parameter you need to optimize so these sort of values you can specify within your configuration files but to start with we don't need to worry about those parameters initially and those would be required at the higher stages right where you need to optimize your model performance and for that purpose you need to use different type of pre processing technique or you need to use different type of model architecture or different type of hyper parameters but that's for the advanced users for the beginners you don't need to worry about those aspects just start with basic building blocks which only required you to provide these three different set of informations and ludwig will provide you a baseline model architecture and baseline model okay so ludwig also provide very advanced features in terms of hyper parameters optimization distributed training it will also provide functionality to serve your machine learning model with the help of fast api framework right so ludwig will provide all those functionality out of the box in addition to different type of visualization through which you would be able to track and monitor your model outcome so it's very powerful it has all the building blocks required for building and deploying any machine learning model which are based on your deep learning framework i have also provided some references to explore ludwig right so i have given the official documentation for ludwig which contains lots of detail around the internal architecture design philosophy and what sort of functionality and features it provides you can also go through the official ludwig documentation which provides all information required for training any deep learning model and what sort of models you can train and what type of use case ludwig will able to solve now we will use ludwig practically to solve text classification problem okay so the first step we need to download data so for that purpose i am simply taking this product review data set from my google drive so for this i will be first mounting the google drive so it's already mounted and in next step i will be simply copying the product review data set from my google drive to the current working directory right so here you can see that we have product review data set and we also have model definition which contains all the model configuration parameters we'll see what it contains in next step we need to install ludwig within your google colab so for that purpose i would be simply installing it with the help of pip install so now you can see that it's installed so now we are ready for the next step in next step i'm simply checking whether my google colab contains gpu as a backend or not because i have already configured the 
runtime as GPU. So you can see it from here. Hardware accelerator has been configured as GPU. So if it's not configured as GPU, I mean you need to select GPU. Otherwise, by default, it will take CPU. Right. So for any deep learning model training, you you need to make sure that it's configured as GPU. Once it's configured, you need to just save it. And here you can see that it's already configured and my Google Colab has identified this device. Next, I will be simply loading all the required packages. So once your package would be installed within your Google Colab environment, the next key activity is to make sure that your configuration file is ready for model training activity. Okay, so here is the definition of my model configuration file which contains all the input features and all the output features along with the data type. So here I have defined the input features as text because that's the name of my input feature column. If you look below because that's the data set which we have just downloaded from my Google Drive and if you'll see that text contains the actual information about the product review and this class is my output category right and that's what we are configuring here the name is my the input feature name is text the type of that input feature is text and similarly for the output feature the name of my output feature is class and the type is category okay we have also two other parameters which are very critical for any text classification problem so here i have defined how we would like to train deep learning model so i am defining the encoder as cnn parallel cnn so if you look the below diagram the parallel cnn will look something like this and in each cnn we are using different width so for the first cnn we, we would be using width as 2 in second width would be 3 4 5 right so so in this way my cnn would be able to capture different information depending upon the width and for width what sort of input we would be passing so the input could be at the word level or it could be at the character level and that's what we are configuring here so right now we are saying that it would be at the word level right and this text would be passed to parallel cnn architecture Right, so that's the architecture my Ludwig will internally use for predicting the output class category. Okay, and that's what we have defined here. But that's the minimum set of requirements we need to define for any text classification problem. All the other parameters would be default. Right, we'll see what those parameters are and how we can modify depending upon your requirements. Okay, but these are the minimum set of requirements we need to start with. Okay, so the next activity we would be simply reading this product review data set. Okay, and if you simply look for the class category, it contains four different type of classes. So it has auto, old, other auto and camera. Each contains close to 3000 samples. Okay. In next step, what we will do, we will be simply taking this product review data set and we'll divide it into train and test data set. Right? So that's what we are doing it here. And after splitting the data set, we are simply storing it within PSV file. So for here, for train, I am storing it within product review underscore train data set. And for test, I will be storing it within product underscore review underscore text PSV file. Okay. Now my data is ready for training any deep learning model and we'll see how we can use Ludwig for training text classification problem. Okay. So that's the command we need to run for running deep learning model. So what we are passing to the Ludwig train is the data set. So my data set would be product review underscore train because that's what we have stored here so that's the first step in second step we will be passing the configuration file so the configuration file is this one where we have configured my input features my output features and what sort of 
Indian architecture it would be using and all those information would be passed to Ludwig train command okay so once we'll run this command it will start training your deep learning model what Ludwig will internally do it will split this train data set in three different parts so it will take this data set it will split it in training which will contain 70 percent of your data validation it will contain 10 percent and finally the test set which contains 20 percent of the data so ludwig will internally train your machine learning model deep learning model on the 70 percent of your training data so once model would be trained it will use the validation data split for validating the model result and finally it will predict the result against the test data so all these activities would be managed by ludwig internally so as a beginner user you don't need to worry about how it has been configured internally but for experienced user ludwig will provide you an option to configure all those default parameters so that you can tune your deep learning model depending upon your requirement now we'll run the training pipeline so i am simply running this cell and it will start training activity so here you can see it has taken all the default parameters so you can see it has taken my configuration parameter which i have configured in this file and for the, all the other parameters it has taken the default values right so you can see that it has some pre-processing steps so depending upon your input and output features it will perform the appropriate pre-processing activity it has many many pre-processing steps and depending upon what sort of input and what what is your output it will perform those pre-processing activities and you can see the split probability so my training is 70 percent validation is 10 percent and the testing is 20 percent and that's what i have defined here but you but if you need to change this value it's very easy to modify this value within your configuration file okay so here you can see that for text it has lots of different type of values what you need to perform right so you can see that it has lots of parameters from the training side it has different parameters what would be the batch size different deep learning parameters right what optimizer it would be using so it is different things and it is using tensorflow 2.4.1 latest version and here the training has started and here if you'll see that it has divided the training data initial initial training data into training validation and test data that's what it has done and in next step it has started the training activity and you can see that it has performed training against the training split evaluated your model against the validation data and it has performed an evaluation against the, the test data that's what it has done so you can see that for epoch 2 similar activity and you can see that my accuracy has slightly increased depending upon how many epochs you would be performing so initially i had 53 percent accuracy for training validation and test in epoch 2 it has slightly increased okay so in this manner it has performed multiple epochs right and i think it has performed eight epochs okay eight epochs for training text classification problem okay and by default it will store all the experiments run here within the result folder and here within the result folder i have experiment underscore run and within experiment underscore run it will store the model and within model it will show all your model artifacts okay so it's very easy to perform deep learning training based on ludwig framework because it's very easy to configure the model configuration file and whatever is required for training your deep learning model you can use it very effectively now we'll see what sort of visualization ludwig provides out of the box and for that we would be using ludwig visualize command and as a parameter we need to pass visualization what sort of visualization you would like to monitor 
और और चेक तो ये रहा पासिंग लर्निंग कर एंड यू कैन फाइंड लॉट्स ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन विद इन योर लुडविक डॉक्यूमेंटेशन अराउंड व्हाट सॉर्ट ऑफ विजुलाइजेशन यू वुड लाइक टू विजुलाइज तो यू कैन सी दैट इट हैज कॉम्पेयर क्लासीफाइड परफॉर्मेंस इट हैज इट हैज मेनी डिफरेंट सॉर्ट ऑफ विजुलाइजेशन टेक्निक एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन व्हाट्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर योर प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट यू कैन यूज इट तो हियर माई रिक्वायरमेंट इज टू विजुलाइज लर्निंग कर ओके एंड द नेक्स्ट पैरामीटर वी नीड टू पास द ट्रेनिंग स्टैटिस्टिक्स जेसॉन विच लुडविक इंटरनली मैनेज एंड इट हैज क्रिएटेड एज ए पार्ट ऑफ ट्रेनिंग एक्टिविटी एंड सो इफ यू गो टू रिजल्ट फोल्डर विद इन रिजल्ट फोल्डर एक्सपेरिमेंट रन यूल फाइंड दैट इट हैज वन फाइल कॉल ट्रेनिंग स्टैटिस्टिक्स दिस फाइल ओके तो वी नीड टू यूज दैट दिस फाइल फॉर क्रिएटिंग दिस लर्निंग कर and an output where we would like to store all the visualization plot so it would be stored under result folder once i will run this statement it will create all the plots and it it will be stored within this result folder so i will simply click it and you can see that it has already created so i will click this one and i will visualize it so you can see it's a learning curve class and you can see that my training and validation right so we have big gap so definitely we need some optimization or we need to do something else to improve the performance of my machine learning model but that's the initial graph which ludwig provides training is is going down because this is the loss curve training is going down but for validation it's going up and we have a big big gap between training and validation so which looks like it's overfitting and definitely we need some corrective action to resolve it okay so these sort of analysis you can very easily perform without writing any single line of code which is very powerful so once that is done the next step would be predicting it against the test data if you remember initially we had created two data set one was trained and the other was test so this test data would be used only for testing purpose right and that's what we would be doing here we would be performing prediction against the test data and again we would be passing this input data as product underscore review test and we need to provide the model path and the model path where the, is my model path model path is within result and within result experiment underscore run so here i will change it and within that we have model folder and that's what we need to pass as a part of model path so we'll simply run it so this statement would be used to predict against new data right so in, in similar way you would be predicting in the production environment right so where we would be getting new set of information and we would be using model to predict the outcome and that's what exactly we are doing here okay so it's already done and after the completion of this step it will store some artifacts within the result folder right so you can see that it has stored many different file class prediction csv if you look right so it has all the prediction is stored here by default so everything would be done internally by ludwig you don't need to worry about all those aspects and if you simply read this file it will have all this output okay and now we'll simply compare it against the actual outcome right so we'll take the prediction and we'll compare it against the actual prediction to see how much accurate it is so i'm simply taking some random test instance and i'm printing the actual and the prediction and the, in this five random instance you can see that my actual and prediction is the same so which means that my model is doing fair job and in next step i will be performing the evaluation and again for evaluation we need to simply run the same command but instead of predict we need to provide evaluate once we will run this it will provide how accurate my model is for individual classes so here it will provide the prediction performance or evaluation against each 
category. So for the camera class, the accuracy was 99.87 and it has also printed the different metrics. Right, so you can see that F1 is scored, it has false discovery rate, it has many many parameters. So whatever is required for your problem statements, you can simply look how my model is behaving based on those metrics. Right, so for camera it's 99.875, for Ford it was 91.33, for other auto it was 75%, for auto 70%. Right, so in this way you can check how my model is doing against each of the output classes. So now we have seen how we can use Ludwig for performing any deep learning model training activity. And at the same time, we can use Ludwig for performing evaluation and prediction against the new data. And Ludwig also provides different functionality to visualize your model output. That's it for now. I hope you will find this video useful. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I request you to subscribe to it. And thanks for watching it again.